All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a G3 siege. Um, we're going to look at every single attack. This is one where I went 10 and 0, so lots of success. Yay. Um, you can see there's my 10 and 0 there at the bottom, taking over the battlefield. Um, here's my first five matches. We were fighting Brazilian Rise and Bromance 108. Here's the next five matches, so we're going to go through them. The only one that didn't make, uh, I forgot to hit like record or whatever, um, was I did one. So we've got nine of the ten matches, and the one I didn't get was a team I use all the time. So I'll show you that real quick, just so you kind of can see what you're missing out on. Um, let's pretend it was these guys. So the team is this top team <clears throat> with Dozer here. So it's Dozer, Tyrannus, Fran. And I use that against uh, Fenyans all the time. Um, it kills a lot of stuff. It doesn't kill things that can burst you down really quick, and it doesn't kill things that are good at bar manipulation, but it worked. It killed something with Fenyang most likely. So just so you know. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to go all the way back. We're going to look at all the matches. Um, in the siege because I feel like you know you want to see teams you want to see uh, defenses you want to see how things are countered in a certain way I'll talk through my thought process and uh, yeah full full siege we don't do that too often so I think that'll be fun so this is match one um, it's a four star base <clears throat> against master nub and they've got the Hrelsveg Hrelsveg I think is the name Skogel Platy which is kind of a weird one um, so I brought Garo, Lucian and Draco so one thing I've found in four star bases is I'd rather bring uh, my best best rune units versus like teams I think that are going to counter. Like these defenses are so well runed that I'd almost rather put my best rune units up against them even if the team comp doesn't seem quite right. Like I might have better units for this comp, but they're not runed as well, so they might as well be worse units. Um, so this is match one. My thought process here was Lucian would kill the Hrelsveg and get the... Um, Skogel low enough that I could kill him pretty quick. That was kind of my thought process there. So we missed the stun. We amp it down. Does not get the kill because I didn't get the attack buff from the Draco, which is a bit of a gamble. I think it's like a one in three chance. I wish I had gotten it, but didn't. So sadness. Not 100% sure I'm going to win this one here. Or I wasn't, but I mean, I did. So getting that defense break is really nice. Let's the Garrow finish him off. And now the Skogel is pretty low, so it's looking pretty good. No wait, he's back. But my Garo, my Garo's pretty good. Like no defense break, 14k first skill. And so now we're feeling really good. We've already used the res. We're buffing back up. Lucian is inexplicably still alive, so that's kind of nice. She's mana bubbling, but we don't care. Yeah, there we go. So that's match one. Little four star base. <clears throat> match two. Can I just say how cool is it that slides? Like I recorded these on um, my iPad using the replay feature. And you just slide between them to... I recorded them as one big video, so I thought that was kind of cool. Okay, so this defense was pretty prevalent in the Bromance 108 guild. I saw it several times, like a full base full. It was a Jean Theo Elad, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, so I used my one safe Jean team, which is um, that guy, <laughs> Amelia and Skogel. What is his name? I don't know. I feel like I should know. Oh, yeah, Bulwark. So... Bulwark is really nice with Amelia, as you know. Um, a Fenyang would be good here, but I don't have that. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna Bulwark, Skogel, Amelia. And we can speed these up too. I mean, you kind of see where this is going. It's, you know, guaranteed immunity against all the Jean shenanigans she tries to do. If something bad happens, like you get defense broken from uh, Theo, you can cleanse it with Amelia and you just slowly rock them down, right? I believe this is one that I kind of, I feel like I screw up on a little bit. I don't target the uh, Elad as hard as I should, and it gets a, at least one res off, maybe two. See, like, shouldn't really get a full res off. That's kind of my fault. I probably should have picked a better target. But we're killing the Theo. Anytime the Theo's down, we have tons of time to just hang out and chill. Um, Theo's the only threat here. So now we start working on the Elad. <clears throat> ah, Theo's back. And we're like, oh, maybe we should, uh, maybe we should kill the thing that keeps making him come back. So we get her down, and now we're, we know we're good. We just got to work our way that always so i don't think you need to watch this entire thing should be pretty self-explanatory um steal the invincibility whenever you can and that's win number two against Rotter. technically win number three if you count the uh the other one okay this is a team i use all the time against this exact defense it's the Kamun bastet odin and i use odin kali bastet counting on cutting in 
So basically, I assume they're going to go first, but then I assume I'm going to cut in, double kill the Odin, and then clean up. So that's that's my plan. I use this all the time, and it works really well. I can swap in Megan, and it works okay too. But see, they're, they're very rarely speed-tuned for the Odin to go next. Very, very rarely. It's really hard to speed-tune an Odin to a, a Bastet, even with speed lead. And my Bastet's nice and quick, so it, it should be able to cut in there. Let's see. Yep, there's the cut, right? That's the plan. Like, it's so automatic that I just count on it now. Like, I just assume it's going to happen. And so then we double kill the Odin with our two nukes. And then what's really nice about Kali Odin is this right here. You can get him back up to five stacks after one kill by using your Kali buff. Kali? Kali buff? Uh, second time around. So he's ready to go again, and then he goes and gets Bastet. Like, this team is like clockwork now. I know I know how this team rolls, so it's really nice. I, I seek out these defenses um, because it's a, perfect, it's a perfect little counter. Early on in Siege... Um, I've got all my good teams that I'm confident in, and late in Siege, it's just a mess. I'm just trying stuff and hoping for the best, and, you know, I just, I don't have that many uh, teams and units ruined, so that's what I do. Okay, this is another one of my nuke teams. I have roughly two nuke teams. This would be number two uh, that I can actually use in Siege, and this is, I try to find a good target for it. So this one, I'm looking at his team, and I'm like, they've got nothing faster than my Megan, I assume, if I bring a speed lead, my Megan's like 292. Is, it, is the Ethna faster than 292? It's possible, but it's it's a good risk to take. They're not often that fast. They like to be on despair. The fastest ones are like 280. So I feel, I'm feeling pretty good here. Um, Covenant and Megan just wreck Theo and Kamun. Like they're direct counters. Like they can still lose, but they're direct counters. So that's why this is a great matchup for me. Like I love bringing Megan against Theo. Like people forget, but it's so good. So there's my buff. Yep. There's the Ethna, not fast enough. So we headshot, boom, gone. And then he gets crushed, but there, wait, Toad Poison. OP, OP skill, watch this. Watch this, watch this Covenant. Bye bye gone, done, easy, right? Like that's that's a really nice team I like quite a bit. Um, so I would recommend that if you, uh, if you can. Okay, we got another four star base here. This is, um, we're getting to the point, I don't attack many four star bases because I just don't have a lot for them. Um, but when, when a four-star base is up and I need to do something, you know, I just kind of throw my best rune units at it and hope for the best. That's what this is. Um, Aegir, Antares, Triana are my best rune four-stars remaining. They're elemental and elementally diverse. Um, so we're just going to throw it out there and roll the dice. This is not, I would say, a counter in any way, shape, or form. It's just rolling the dice. <clears throat> not a good start, but not unexpected either. I mean, it is Orion. Get the little heal. Start working on Orion. I don't know if that's smart or not. I feel like my target selection in this match is off the entire time. No stuns. I'm like, oh, I'll switch targets because that's how you win. You just switch on to other things randomly. Um, but that's what I did. I slept the Skogel, which again, I don't think is very smart. Like, what are the odds of it sleeping versus the guaranteed giving it a faster cooldown? I don't know. But it's going okay. We're not dead yet. We're not stunned, so that's good. Keep working on the Antares. I've, or the Antares, the Kamun. I've apparently decided he's got to die. He's working on Triana. We get a nice little heal there. That was an interesting choice. I had to decide who to cleanse because uh, Triana and Aegir both had heal block. And I decided on Triana um, because Triana can keep Aegir alive and Aegir can heal himself once he procs or whatever out, out of his heal block. And he cycles a little more. So he'll start healing himself a little bit better. That was my thought there. Triana's still working away. And then we're still working. The, the thought on the Kamun as a target, I believe, <clears throat> is that... Uh, he's weak against both of my damage dealers, whereas uh, Orion is not, and I don't really want to fight a Skogel with a shield. So I'm thinking if I can kill that Kamun, then I can move on and be in good shape. So he's still Orioning. We get a nice little proc there, a little stun, and now we're feeling real nice. Another proc, get a stun on Orion, pretty lucky. And then we're like, okay, we're killing Orion, we'll get Skogel last. We, we're pretty sure we can survive. We just don't want to get random orion up, right? So there's Aegir healing himself up. Triana topping off, and now it's just burn the tank is where we're at. Confiscate, take his bar, hit him with that, all the goodness, and rot is gone. Moving on. Okay, this is kind of a weird one. I was like, hmm, <laughs> what do I do? It's it's clearly going first, so I have to decide how I'm gonna how I'm gonna survive him trying to wreck me. And my thought was, is I built this light sniper with the express intent of it cutting stuff like this that has to buff and then nuke. And it hits really hard, so maybe I can kill, I'm thinking I'm thinking the uh, the Daphnis is my thought. 
Um, if not the Daphnis, then maybe the Sierra. So that's my thought there. I've got the Camilla to tank the Sierra, which it can take a few turns to kill a Camilla with a Sierra, my Camilla anyway. Um, so I, I, it's a pretty reliable tank for a couple turns, and it is good damage. Um, you know, Rena would be another option, but Rena is not good damage and will eventually get just bombed into Oblivion. Um, and then the Perna's there for additional damage against both his damage dealers and the heals is the thought there. And Perna's, Perna's kind of hard to kill because, you know, two lives. So this was a new team for me. I never really tried it. No leader, you know, it's kind of sad, but I felt like it was a pretty good counter pick and they're all ruined pretty well. So there's the buff. Here's the sniper. This is the skill two, which is the buff removal. 21.4, I think it said. So enough to kill Daphnis, but not enough to kill most Sierras and most other units. So that's kind of his weakness. Um, he can kill a unit or two, but they have to be exactly the right unit. And there's not there's not a lot of instances where they are exactly the right units. So I don't know. It worked here, but I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a a reliable uh, strategy. So Sierra's going nuts on Camilla, but what's nice is she always follows it up with skill one, which unless she detonates, um, it clears the bomb. So she's only getting bombed every other bomb attempt whenever she can actually detonate. So a little, little Camilla tip. Plus she's getting massive heals from herself and Perna. And we have to kill Sierra, right? Like it's the only choice. Sierra's like, I don't care. I'll kill your sniper. And she does that very efficiently. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm not feeling 100%, but I'm feeling pretty good here. Like Sierra that low, I feel like either one of these units can get her done. So we're like, yes, kill it. And don't get bombed. Oh, she got bombed. But she's still alive in a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Finally, got Sierra. And then now we're really good. Um, Perna Camilla versus Bastet. I feel okay. So that worked. The sniper paid off. The sniper gave me a turn in a spot I did not deserve. You know, like that's kind of his job. It gave me the opportunity to kill Daphnis um, undeservedly so. Additionally, with that damage, now that I think about it, it was 21k, but it was through a shield, through a Bastet shield. So... Maybe not, maybe not terrible. I'll keep, I'll keep messing with him. I'd like to use him in RTA, um, but he only counters the team I like to run and I don't fight my own kind of team very much because there's only so many units that are useful and I try to pick them. Um, but clean this one up against Low, Lowell, Lowell. All right, next match. This is a crazy one. I was not sure on this pick, but I was like, why not? Let's try it. Um, you know. Chimera's hit hard. I really should have gone triple Chimera. That would have been, that would have been smart. But my theory was I would use Okeanos to reset Jean, which would give me a couple turns to squall things. That was the thought. The execution is something else against Raphael 2710 of Brazilian Rise. So I'm like, okay, we'll stun, right? No, it was just the one. I just wanted to stun Jean, but no. Um, I do my AOE and I'm like, oh no, that's not good. Luck in, luck into, I get lucky on the skill and freeze the Jean, which is what I need. I need that Jean under control. Uh, we get nuked, which is normal. She starts doing all her stuff. But since he uh, blew himself up, the uh, invincibility went under the Molong, which is great. So, okay, see, so he's dead. I'm like, eh, this is not good, but I'm going to give it a go here, right? I got to kill Ajon. So everybody's kind of low. We're still taunted. All right, we didn't get stunned there. Lucked out. Didn't get defense broken. We squall down the Molong. We squall down the Jean, And now it's like, okay, can we do this? I mean, not like that, but we didn't die. And also not like that, but he's at half health. We squall. We die, and then we squall. It worked! That was kind of lucky, right? I could have picked so much better. I could have picked a healer. I could have picked a something with a lead, maybe an immunity, you know? Like, and really triple Chimera would be better just for fun. So that was a mistake, I think. All right, this one, I looked at this defense by Dan of Brazilian Rise, and I was like, wait a minute, there is no immunity there. None. I can control this thing start to finish. We're just gonna Ganny Hathor it. We're gonna throw Elad lead in there. And that's the plan. Like, I feel pretty good about this. It's kind of a weird defense by him, but all I gotta do is prevent that uh, Fenyang from buffing. Cause I have no buffs. He only has one buffer and it's Fenyang. All I gotta do is control Fenyang the entire time and Bulwark is useless. So that's the plan. And spoilers, it works. Let's speed it up. <laughs> cause yeah, I'm like, oh, I'll kill Molong cause he's already blown his skill. So he's already done 70% of the kill work for me. Um, so I focus Molong and just keep sleeping and blah, blah, blah. Things Ganny Hathor does. Don't really use them in RTA, but hey, every once in a while on Siege, happy times. So now, in my mind, Bulwark will never get another buff if I can control that Fenyan. And even if he does, it won't be it won't be too many, it'll be two. So I'm just gonna control him forever, kill the Bulwark, and then we're gonna move on to the Fenyan. Is the plan. And works pretty good. At 2x speed on three little arrows. So 
You can imagine how long this took. It took a while. But, I mean, it was fun. It was fun to do. The way my guild uh, does target selection in Siege is a little different than a lot of guilds. Um, when I was in Epic Fail for a little while, we they, they marked certain uh, targets, and that's what you were supposed to hit. And so what we would find is that, or look, what I found, is sometimes my available offense didn't line up with the defenses there. And so I was more likely to get a loss or a draw, um, which, you know, we were hitting exactly the base you wanted, but I was like, hmm, am I throwing my attacks away? I don't know. In some cases I was, whereas in Kindred Shadow, what we do is hit whatever you want um, and like no one even cares what you select. We just all blow our attacks and we either win or lose and that's whatever, you know, um, which I like better because I tend to have certain teams that I need to use in certain situations. Um, and I only match up well against certain other teams. Like I can only kill Jean like one or two ways. Some people can kill Jean a lot of ways, but not me. Um, so if all our attackable bases are Jean's, I'm out of luck, right? Okay, I believe this is the last one of the set, I think. And I was pretty happy with this team. Um, so I thought it through, right? I'm like, okay, Monkey's gonna be stunning like crazy. This is another defense I see quite a bit from Raphael2710. It's a Wind Monkey, Harmonia, and Theo, right? I don't know. It's catching on. Um, I don't know. It's around. <laughs> you'll, you'll have seen it in G3 or wherever. Um, but I used Molong, Josephine, Praha. And my theory was Praha, Josephine is a nice little combo because you can activate Josephine whenever you want by going to sleep with Praha. So that's nice. Um, Monkey's going to be revenging a lot and stunning a lot, which is Josephine's like, yeah, I don't care about that. Um, they have a buff with the Harmonia. So Praha's buff removal will be useful. And then I need some way to kill something, and that is the Molong, in my opinion. I'm just going to Molong down one, two, three until there's nothing left. So that was my thought there. <clears throat> so we're going after Theo. Trying to just go after Theo the entire time. That's kind of the plan, because Theo's a problem. I know I'm going to get balanced. I know he's going to get healed, but he's also the weakest. Like, it's an easy... Uh, reckless assault into Theo because you're not going to lose any life, right? He doesn't have enough uh, he doesn't have enough health to really mess with the Molong. So it's a pretty safe target for the Molong as well. Um, so that's why I did that. That was my thought. Let's see here. So he's down. Now I'm like, okay, we're going to get Harmonia. That's the next plan. Just It's just a matter of time, in my opinion. Like, I just got to slowly get it down to 30% and then we're good, right? So that's that's the plan. Looking pretty good. He's looking like he's right where he needs to be. Nice little hit there on him. Defense program. I'm just waiting for my skill. There it is. We're done. So now get the heal, get the shield. I mean, it's all working really, really nice. It's a nice little combo. Um, I mean, I feel like you could use this in RTA pretty easily as well. Easy to CC, I guess, kind of. Josephine's kind of easy to CC, but I mean, it works, it works okay, I think. I was happy with it anyway, so. We keep hitting the monkey, hitting the monkey. And that's it. So that is the full uh, 10 matches, minus the one that I messed up, of a G3 siege going 10 and 0. Here's the final results of the siege. Um, so, I mean, skin of our teeth, right? We were spread out like crazy, and red came back and took over a bunch. Um, but we did win. So, yay, go us or whatever. Um, but it turned out okay. So. Hope that was helpful, both on thought process, offenses, defenses. Um, you know, if you're having siege issues, maybe they'll be useful. If you're looking for G3 defenses, you saw, you know, 10 of them. Um, so anyway, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you in the next video. Take care, everybody.